Hello everybody and welcome slash welcome back to my YouTube channel. I really hope you're all doing okay and have a great day and an amazing week. My name is Effie and today we have another get ready with me video. This is only my second get ready with me video that I've done but I'm hoping to do them every month and I let my Instagram followers decide which palette I use and the palette they've chosen this month is the Beauty Crop Pina Colada palette. It looks like this. I've obviously gone for a blue look. I also let my Instagram followers suggest topics of conversation and one of my lovely followers did suggest today's topic and that is my opinion on high-end versus drugstore makeup. So that's what I'm going to be talking about. I'm going to do this makeup look and just chat about the topic of conversation. Everything I use on my face will be linked down in the description box below in case you are interested. But other than that, I will let you enjoy the video. If you do, please give it a big thumbs up. And if you like my content, please consider subscribing. I put up two videos a week and it's always makeup content. So if that sounds like your type of thing, then this is the place for you. But I'll let you enjoy the video. So let's make a start with our Get Ready Me. And as always, I'm going to start with the eyes. And we are using the Beauty Crop Pina Colada palette. It looks like this. I'm feeling a blue look. You've probably already seen it in the intro, but I haven't. So I'm going to do a blue look, I'm just going to put it on my eyes and we're going to get started on talking about our topic of this month. So the topic of this month was very kindly suggested by somebody on one of my Instagram accounts. As always, if you'd like to be involved in picking the palette or suggesting topics to talk about, you can follow me on either of my Instagram accounts. There is at Effie's underscore place and that is just makeup content pictures of looks, things like that, and then there's at Effie's underscore pans, and that is about panning makeup. And on there, every month, I upload a poll so you can pick from four palettes as to which one I use in these videos, and I also upload a little box where you can drop suggestions of what I should talk about, and one of my lovely followers has suggested that I talk about the difference and my opinion on high-end versus drugstore makeup, so that's what we're going to do today. I don't normally start my videos with disclaimers and I'm not going to make a habit of it but what I am going to say is that obviously people's personal finances is none of my business and it's none of anybody's business so I don't think we should ever judge somebody based on their preferences between high-end or drugstore makeup and obviously whatever you can afford if makeup is what you love and you can own, you can afford drugstore makeup and you can't afford high-end makeup that's fine it doesn't make you any less of a makeup lover or anything like that it doesn't mean that you're not welcome in the makeup community so yeah just throwing that out there please don't put any nasty comments or anything like that not that I ever get any nasty comments but I would like to keep it that way so I'm just going to start by firstly talking about how drugstore versus high-end has changed a bit in my lifetime because I feel like we have gone through a massive shift when it comes to makeup in the past 20 years maybe. So for me as a kid growing up I wasn't really into makeup. I didn't get into makeup until I was about 18, 19 um, and I'm now 24. Back in the day, back in my day, um, drugstore makeup, there wasn't loads of choice there were still the brands you had today, um, like there was still Revlon and Max Factor and, you know, Bourgeois just come back and I'm pretty sure there was still MUA in collection and things like that. But there wasn't the choice of products that you get today, like colourful eyeshadow, something like this would not have existed maybe 10, 15 years ago. And then, kind of not to blow their trumpet because I don't think they need it, but I do feel like the brand Makeup Revolution really changed the game when it came to drugstore makeup. They truly, truly did. And that is because when they joined, they actually started out as like a duping brand. They were just duping high-end products. I'm pretty sure they always used to dupe like the Urban Decay palettes. I think that's really where they started. And then they started duping like Anastasia and things like that. And that sort of made the drugstore step up its game a little bit in my opinion. But Revolution sort of came in and started making palettes that people were actually interested in at affordable prices. And I think this really opened the door for more people to take a bigger interest in makeup. Because now they could afford to buy 
nice palettes and things like that and create different looks. And from there, I think other brands like MUA Collection, they sort of expanded their range to include more sort of trendy products. And from that, because a lot more people were getting into makeup, I think the idea of a makeup influencer sort of grew and expanded a lot. Now, I just want to say I'm not like a massive makeup historian in any way. And if you are interested in genuinely hearing researched history of brands and things like that, Smoky Glow here on YouTube does like deep dives into certain brands and in, she's done one into influencer culture and things like that. So if you're genuinely interested in hearing like a historical accurate video, um, please go and check her out. This is just what I've seen in my opinion. So as influencers grew, brands started to work with them. I think the main one that really started working with influencers was Morphe. But Revolution as a brand also started working with influencers quite early on. In fact, they picked up Soph from Soph Does Life, Tammy from Makeup by Tammy, and Kami from, I can't remember his channel name, but these were three rather, not small influencers at the time, but they, they weren't what they are now. And Revolution picked them up and made them part of their social media team and they were creating videos for Revolution and Revolution just grew and grew and grew and grew and grew and so they started making their own makeup instead of just duping other brands and even now they still dupe other brands quite a lot but they also come out with a lot of their own products and things like that and they're obviously a massive brand in the makeup community a lot of people still shop from them their videos, when I do videos on Revolution Makeup, they're still very popular. They are still very affordable. However, not as affordable as they used to be. Um, yeah, unfortunately, inflation has taken them up a notch. But yeah, from there, I think makeup has become such a huge thing. And for a time, it was popular to have loads and loads and loads and loads and loads of makeup a goal that I'm clearly still working towards. I think the tides have shifted a little bit now. I think people are more looking to have a small but really, really good collection. Having a huge collection nowadays just isn't the one. Obviously, we're a lot more worried about the planet and uh, things going into landfill and things like that. We're just a lot more conscious, I think, which is great. But I do think that has caused a little bit of a shift. Because now, on top of makeup overall being more accessible, high-end makeup is more accessible. And by that, what I mean is that you have shops like Boots where you can go in and buy high-end makeup. You can buy things like KVD, Kylie Cosmetics, um, Fenty Beauty. I think you can buy some like proper high-end brands in there. I'm not too sure. I generally tend to steer clear of the high-end brands because I'm not that rich but yeah they're a lot more accessible also you can buy things online nowadays cult beauty offers a wide range of high-end makeup that you can order straight to your door so it's just a lot more accessible and because now people are looking to have a curated but really good collection i think a lot of people have sort of turned to higher end brands under the assumption that high-end means higher quality and I'll get on to whether or not I think that later on in the video. I think some brands have done really well to make themselves more accessible and sort of develop a cult following by using things like social media and things like that and sending PR to influencers because I pretty much won't buy a high-end product unless I've heard someone that I follow really speaking out about how good it is. What I'm going to do now is go off camera and do the other eye because it's boring to watch me do two eyes and when we get back we will carry on. I'm going to quickly write down where we were up to so I don't forget. 
I'm back and I'm evened up. I also went in with a little bit of the Beauty Bay liquid eyeshadow in Malachite. I don't know how to pronounce it. Just on the centre to try and give it a bit more. It didn't really lighten it. It kind of just turned a bit more greeny blue, but I'm fine with that. We were talking about the fact that high-end makeup has become more accessible and that influencers are often used very well by marketing teams, I would say, to get some awareness brought to products and obviously high-end makeup is now available online, in some stores and overall just a lot more people have access to it than they did 20 years ago. What I think this has led to is almost four different categories. It's no longer just high-end and drugstore. I would say now that there are four categories of makeup and the first category I would say, I've used too much primer, is the cheap makeup, the really cheap makeup. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's bad, it's just extremely cheap and these are brands like MUA Collection, Primark makeup I would include in this. Um, Things like Shop Miss A, although I'm not sure if that's real, I don't know anything about Shop Miss A, but I know that they're incredibly cheap. Shein makeup is also incredibly cheap. So yeah, those super cheap, inexpensive brands, not all of them are bad brands. I would say that MUA and Collection are two of my favourite brands at the moment, I'm really interested in them. And then the next category is sort of the standard typical drugstore where I would say a foundation would cost you anywhere between 8 to 12 pounds. That's what I would call drugstore makeup given the prices of things nowadays. I mean 12 pounds for a foundation or like 15 pounds for a foundation is a lot in my opinion but that's because I'm used to pre-inflation where you could get foundation for like a fiver. In fact, one of my favourite foundations is from Collection and it is five pounds, I'm pretty sure. So this is sort of your typical drugstore brands. I would put Revolution in this category now because Revolution's prices have gone up and up and up, um, which is fine, but they're just not the same brand they were when they started. And I'm using the XX Revolution foundation and this is quite expensive from what I remember. I bought it a while ago. It's not cheap, but then they have some stuff that is cheap. They sort of toe the line, and I think they do offer a little bit of something for everyone. But then on the flip side of that, I kind of think a lot of their products are the same, with just different names and different prices. So, that's a bit questionable in its own right. And then category number three for me would be higher drugstore prices slash the standard sort of high-end prices. Um, and for this, I sort of mean, XX Revolution sort of toes the line here a little bit, um, but I'm talking in brands like Fenty, KVD, um, Urban Decay, I guess Anastasia, the sort of standard high-end products that are still obtainable, like it's not a ridiculous price, like paying what is it for an Anastasia palette these days, like 43 or something like that? For like one of their standard palettes. Or like I'm pretty sure the Fenty foundations are like 20 quid or something like that. That's what I'm sort of talking about when I say this third category. And I would class this as high end. Category 1 would be cheap, category 2 would be drugstore, category 3 would be high end. And then we'll come on to category 4 in a minute. But yeah, this sort of br branding is higher end, bit more expensive, generally seen to be a good quality of makeup, but still accessible. Like you can get most, most of the brands I've just said, you can get in boots. And I think a lot of people are going towards these type of brands. And then category number four is what I would call insanely overpriced. And for this, I'm talking about brands like Viseart, I know that their palettes are extremely overpriced. Same with Natasha Denona, I know so many people love the palettes, they are overpriced. No palette is worth a hundred and something quid. I'm sorry, it's just how I feel. And I will get onto my opinion on these things in a little bit, but 
spoiler alert, I don't think you should be spending over £100 on an eyeshadow palette. I don't think it's worth it. Now obviously some people love to spend a little bit more money and they love to splurge and that is completely fine. I accept that, I'm not going to tell you what to do with your money. For me, spending 20 something quid on a lipstick is a bit much. Um, in fact, most of, if you ever see high-end makeup in my collection, I've either won it through a giveaway, received it in a glossy box or a glossy box advent calendar or some sort of advent calendar or whatever, or a friend has decluttered it and given it to me. There is no high-end makeup that I've bought. And like I said, I will get onto my opinion in a moment, but yeah, I don't buy high-end makeup. So yeah, I just think that makeup has evolved to the point where it now has four categories and now people are moving slowly up the chain. So I think a lot of people still start on the cheap makeup. In fact, I think a lot of people nowadays, given the current climate and things like that, I think a lot of people are trying to find really good affordable makeup. And I do think the current economic situation could lead to a shift again but as of right now I would say people are generally moving up the ladder towards those higher end products you know people like to treat themselves splurge on a good eyeshadow palette at Christmas and things like that I'm trying to get powder off my brush but it's not happening that'll do you know people are willing to spend the money on things they enjoy and makeup has now become something that people enjoy and it's not just what you put on I look so pale it's not just what you put on to you know look presentable at work it's now something that people can enjoy and spend time doing like I'm doing right now but I think a result of people moving up the ladder moving towards using higher end products is that these super expensive brands are now becoming a thing and they're sort of taking the place of high-end makeup where it used to be and high-end makeup is now where drugstore makeup used to be in that pretty much anyone who has a decent makeup collection will probably have one or two high-end products in their collection in fact some people nowadays probably this is doing nothing let me grab a different blush. I got a different blush, my camera did cut out, so we were talking about the fact that nowadays people will buy more from high-end brands in general and their makeup collection might have more high-end products and things like that. And so now these super expensive brands are now seen as the new high-end where you only have them realistically if you've got the money to spend on it. Whereas I don't think buying a high-end makeup product has the same sort of like level of prestige, I guess. So now these new brands, and I said Natasha Denona, but like Pat McGrath, that's in there too. Charlotte Tilbury is sort of on the edge between category three and four, I think. But it's a lot more prestigious, it's a lot more of a flex I guess you could say to have these higher end brands in your collection and they are definitely I'm putting on so much blush they are definitely not the same as having brands like Anastasia and Fenty anymore you know I'm actually going to go in with a third blush just to add a bit more all three blushes will be linked in the description box <laughs> along with everything else I'm putting on my face in case you're interested so there we go that's my sort of take on what the makeup industry has gone through and what it sort of looks like right now I guess now it's time to actually talk about my opinion on these things and as always you know my opinion is my opinion you're allowed a completely different opinion that's fine you can even tell me your opinion in the comments that's also fine just please don't be rude to anyone including me you know we're all here to enjoy makeup and talk about makeup and that's it so, my opinion on drugstore versus high-end makeup. I guess it would make sense to start with sort of where I've come from in makeup. And that is that I've never really had loads of money. In fact, I say this, at the moment I probably have the most money I've ever had in my life because I have a full-time job. So, 
I am in a position where if I wanted to, I could buy high-end makeup, but as I've already said, none of the makeup that is high-end in my collection has been bought by me for full price, because there are some items that I've picked up in TK Maxx and things like that. With that sort of means that I've sort of always used drugstore makeup, I've always used Revolution, MUA, Collection, things like that. And now that I have money to spend on whatever I want and I have a YouTube channel, I just sort of think that I would rather spend 50 quid and get a full face of e.l.f. and do an entire testing video on e.l.f. than spend 50 quid and just get like, I don't know, a blush and a foundation from a different brand, you know? I do think palettes are different, um, but I still have my limits. Um, for example, I have two of the Stacey Marie Carnival palettes. Um, they were both bought at severe discounts. Because I want to try them, but pay I mean, they're not even that expensive. They're like, what, 40 quid? Which, in my, for me, that's not loads of money, but I just can't because I know that five years ago I wouldn't have been able to afford it and I don't know it just feels weird spending that much money on something to be honest that's the main reason it just feels weird and to be completely honest in terms of eyeshadow palettes and like blushes, bronzers, highlights, brow products, lip products I would say there are plenty of drugstore brands that give you exactly what you are looking for. Like, I could go through my collection and pick out my favourites in every category, and I can guarantee you that most of them will be drugstore, um, even though I have high-end, like, products in those categories, I will probably still prefer the drugstore ones, just because they're they're just as good, if not better, and the fact that they're not costing me an arm and a leg makes them even better in my opinion. However, I will say, I know that there is a bit of an argument for there being, like, foundations that are better and concealers that are better because a brand or which has more money is able to spend more time like researching formulas and things like that and maybe get higher coverage or longer lasting and all these things and so I guess if you're if you want to spend more money on something like a foundation or a concealer I can kind of see the argument for that I can get behind that a little bit more but if you're spending like 25 pounds on a blush I just don't see the point. I always think that with makeup there's always the argument of what works for one person isn't necessarily going to work for another and I would rather spend £5 on a foundation and find that it doesn't work for me than spend £35 on a foundation and find that it doesn't work for me. So yeah, that's kind of where I stand on high-end versus drugstore. I do think the, my channel is mainly drugstore makeup, but because I do think there is now a divide between cheap and drugstore, I kind of switch between the two. Um, I very rarely stray into the high-end um, makeup realm. Like I said, I do have some high-end products and I enjoy using them, but I sometimes worry about using them on my channel because I don't want anybody to think that you need to spend however much money on a palette or a blush or whatever because you don't I truly don't think you do I think for most people in everyday life if you're going to the office the majority of people are not going to be able to tell the difference as to whether it's drugstore or high end like if I wear a two pound foundation or I wear a 20 pound foundation you can guarantee the people at work are not going to know the difference I also just think there's, that nowadays there's so many brands that do dupes and things like that that you just don't need to spend the money. And I think that's the main point of this video. I think that's the main point of my entire opinion. If you want to spend the money on high-end makeup, go for it. Have at it. You do you. It is your money, completely your decision to make. 
but you don't have to. Especially now with so many brands and so much choice and so much accessibility, you definitely don't need to be spending loads and loads of money. And now I just want to sort of drop in here at the end a little bit about where I think the makeup community is going because like I said, inflation is hitting a lot. There have been so many brands, I say so many, there's been quite a few brands that have like not been hit well by recent historical events. I'm talking things like good old illnesses and things like that. You know what, I'm gonna just do my brow and then I'll come back because it's just turning into a mess. So where I think the future of makeup is going I think given the fact that so many brands are falling at the moment, and they are big brands too, they're not like small brands, they're big brands, and they are falling, I think that might be a theme over the next few years at least. It's not just small brands that are falling, in fact, Becca, BH Cosmetics, I'm pretty sure Max Factors had some issues recently, they are all big brands, they're not small brands, I'll sort my hair out in a moment. And I do think that this is going to continue. I think we are going to see a few more brands fall. I think it's also going to be really good for some other brands like Makeup Revolution scooping up BH Cosmetics, Smashbox picking up Becca. That's going to be really helpful to those brands. I also think that there is a massive, massive rise in the number of indie brands that are generating decent followings. There are a lot of small brands out there that are really getting a lot of traction, they're getting seen on YouTube, they're getting looked at a lot more closely, um, a lot of people are interested in these small indie brands a lot more nowadays, I think that's amazing, I love it when I find a really good indie brand that I enjoy. I do think, in general, the overall landscape of makeup is changing, and I think it's going to change a lot, and I think people are that people's opinions and things like that are changing a lot and their buying habits are changing a lot and it's going to be very interesting to watch but there we go I hope I didn't ramble too much through this video and I hope you could follow what I was saying because I do tend to just go off on tangents a lot but this is the makeup I'm actually pleasantly surprised I don't normally do a red lip with a blue eye but I just had the red lipstick in front of me to be honest the palette I'm surprised at. I'll be honest, this is my second time ever using it. And the first look I did in the testing video, I didn't love. Just gonna be honest. But this look, I actually quite like. I think it's a bit heavy, um, but that's fine with me. Um, I quite like it. I wish there was some lighter shimmers in here, um, but that's fine. Um, yeah, the black, surprisingly good. So yeah, there we go. The poll for what palette I'm going to use next month will be up on my Instagram tomorrow or maybe today, I'm not sure. Um, check out my Instagrams if you want to get involved. But there we go. I hope you enjoyed the topic of conversation. Thank you so much to the lovely person that suggested it for me. If you have any more suggestions of what I should talk about, please feel free to drop it in a comment down below and I will consider talking about it. This was actually a really fun topic. Um, I generally tend to not talk about these things because I never want to be telling people how to spend their money. But I feel like I didn't do that today. I feel like I did a good job of not doing that, hopefully. But anyway, I will let you go. I hope you have a great day and an amazing week. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. And if you like my content, please consider subscribing. I put up two videos a week and it's all makeup content. So if that sounds like your type of thing, then this is the place for you. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.